Welcome to my shop, my name is Guy, and today I want to talk to you about the Kitty Tech X Plus 3 3D printer. So first let's talk about the specs of this printer. This is obviously a fully enclosed cube printer, and it's 280 by 280 by 270 high. Let me open up the door and take the lid off here so you can see this a little bit better. So here's the tool head of the machine and uh, we're going to take this cover off. Just pulls up and comes off like this. This is a dual gear extruder on here. Uh, it is also hardened steel so it can be used with the braces and engineering grade materials. It does have a ceramic heater core on it so it heats up very very fast and there appears to be a single 50 by 15 fan for the parts cooling. On the side here is a very small fan for the hot end cooling. A couple things to notice on the inside here. First of all, it does come with a PEI flex plate for the build. There's also an exhaust fan back here and it does come with a bag of charcoal. So if you're printing ABS in this, and you have the exhaust fan on, it will help reduce the smell anyways. And on the back of the machine here, it does have an active heater core, which is really nice if you're gonna be printing any engineering grade materials, even ABS. Keeping the interior of this really warm and enclosed when you're printing materials like that really helps the stability of those items. There is also an auxiliary fan down here to help cool when you're doing PLA. It does not come on using uh, ABS. Now, I've turned the machine around, I've taken the back cover off. This is the fan to keep the electronics cool. This is the exhaust fan I showed you from the inside before. And this is the electronics. I want to take a closer look at this. Now this does use a maker base board, um, quad core processor. It's got the, the Raspberry Pi built right into it. It does run Clipper. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. This right here is actually the wireless module. This is hooked up into a USB that goes on the top of the case. You can go camera up to that or you know put files in it. This is an Ethernet jumper cable. There is an Ethernet part on the back of this, and that's something that's really nice. Especially when you if, if you're able to, you can plug this into your network, and when you're running a camera through it, you can get much higher frame rates for it. So that's pretty nice. Um, this is kind of interesting right here. This is a relay. Now the, the bed on this does not have a uh, 110 or 120 volt heated bed. Underneath this there's actually two power supplies. There's a 450 and a 350 and I'm not 100% sure of this but I'm pretty sure anyways that this relay is for the bed and it's using one of those two power supplies just for the bed. So the bed does heat up pretty quick, but I, I don't believe it's 110 volts. Um, but other than that, it's pretty standard stuff here. It's kind of messy, but uh, it's, it's very serviceable. Here's some other stuff it comes with. It comes with a dry box that fits on the back. It comes with desiccant for the inside of it. And you can actually mount this on the back of the, the, the printer and print right out of this. It comes with an extra hot end. Now this is a hardened steel hot end for engineering grade material or abrasive materials. So that's really, really nice. Comes with, you know, the usual assortment of tools and Allen keys, scraper, screwdriver, and ethernet cable. It does come with glue for the bed. Now I have put glue on the bed. I had a couple problems with adhesion on that bed. So um, anyways, and it does come with the special paper for bed leveling. This does have a five inch color touch screen and it is pretty nice. It has an interior light you can turn on and off, which is pretty cool. These are the files that are loaded on here. And here are some controls. You can load and unload filament from here. You can calibrate the the bed and also do input shaping right from here. And here's your network configuration. And it also has a section down here for things like language and rebooting the printer and things like that. Now, I mentioned before that this unit does run Clipper, which is really nice, but it's a cheaty version of Clipper. So it's got their own Clipper screen on it, which is, you know, skin for them. Um, if we go down to the tools and calibrate, 
right here, this one button does auto bed leveling. And it's asking us to heat the bed up. After you hit the calibrate button, it goes into the Z offset. Now it comes with a special sheet to do this. And after you got the sheet under the nozzle, just like any other printer, you want to move it back and forth and then change the position of the head. I've already got my Z set, so I'm not going to do it. But you just move the head up and down until this paper drags underneath the head. Once that's done, you hit next. And then it's going to go through the bed leveling procedure. After you complete the Z offset configuration, it'll automatically go into a bed mesh, which will store it into memory for later use. So the auto leveling is complete, I can move on. It's going to save that to memory like I mentioned before. So after I've completed the bed leveling, I can hit input shaper and it will start that process. So you, it's very hard to see, but you might be able to hear it. Uh, this head is moving back and forth very, very fast along the x-axis. When it gets done with that, it's going to go back and forth against the y-axis, and it's going to measure the frequencies that it resonates at. And then later on, when you're printing something, it's going to automatically compensate for those resonances and help reduce uh, banding and things like that in your prints. So complete the input shaping and it saved it and rebooted the machine and it's all set. Let's load some filament. I'm going to go back here. First thing I need to do is I need to heat up the end and hit load. But I need to heat up the hot end first. Let's go to 220 and let it heat up. It's going to heat up pretty fast with that ceramic heater core. So I'm on the back of the machine now and Chidi was nice enough in their box to send a half roll of filament, which is pretty nice since I have that little tiny crappy sample packs that you get with a lot of printers. Uh, this is a filament runout sensor, and you just feed the filament up through here all the way to the print head until it stops. Now with the filament in here, I'm going to set it to extrude 50 millimeters and hit the extrude button and it's coming out the hot end, so that's good. Now it did come with this USB flash drive and I've pre-sliced the file using Orca Slicer and the just the standard settings for this machine, which does come standard in Orca Slicer, so I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm just going to take this and put it back here. Now if I go into the menu, there's SDA1, which is the card. I'm going to test file and see what I can find. There it is, Orca Cube PLA, 31 minutes. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to let it do bed leveling. Now, when I do the bed leveling automatically on this, it's not like the, the bamboo or the Coralities that I have where it does the entire bed. It's got something installed in it called CAMP, which is Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging. So it only does the bed leveling in that small area where it's going to actually be uh, printed at. So I'm going to hit play or print. Now it's asking me to make sure that I've removed the lid because I'm using PLA. If you're using ABS, it'll ask you to make sure you have the lid on it. So I'm going to hit confirm. And there it goes. I've got all the information. So right now it's heating the hot end up and the bed. And once it gets to the correct temperature, like I said, it will do the bed leveling on just the area that's going to get printed and then do a small purge line, heat up, and then do the print. Well, the slicer said it would take 31 minutes. It actually took 27 minutes. And that's it. Now, I mentioned this does have a full version of Clipper on it. It's Keedy's version of Clipper, which is very important to remember because you can't update it. If you do, you'll probably break the, the firmware on it. But uh, it does have a web interface, and you can add a camera to it. I've added a camera to it before, and it worked fine. But here's all your macros, G-code previews. Everything is right here.
Well, here's the cube done. And there's still some ring on there, even with the input shape. I don't know if you can see it. Some bulging on the corners here. Now, mind you, this is completely untuned. Looks good along the Y. That looks good. Again, there's still some ringing there. Here's some other test prints that I did. This is a test print that actually came with the Elegoo Neptune 4, and I really liked it. And uh, it came out really, really nice. This was using uh, Elegoo Rapid PLA. This is using standard Overture PLA, and it's a little fidget block thing that came with the printer, the Chitty Tech. And uh, I test the tolerance on it. It was actually really, really nice. Everything moved really nice and evenly. This is a print I did in ABS, and you can see all the stringing up here. I'm sure I can tune that out. I have not done any tuning on this printer at all. The overhangs, pretty good on this. It came out to about 20 before we started to have issues. And then we've got these up here. So, but it's, it's still pretty good. Then I've got a couple jars I made, and this is with using the Elegoo Wrap and PLA also. Really, really nice even layer lines, and the lid screws on really nice and evenly. There's no problems there at all. And of course, I did a Benchy, and now this is a, this Benchy is exceptional quality. Um, really good layer lines, oh, no stringing whatsoever on this. The corners look sharp. There's no problem with the overhang here. Uh, the letters came out really nice. I'm very, very impressed with the benchy on here. Now here's another jar I did, and you can just see the how nice those layer lines look. That seam there. But again, the tolerances are really, really good. The the lid screws on really nice. And this is the test that I did using regular Overture PLA. Again, a lot of stringing, and I, I really need to get rid of that. I just changed the retraction. But same problem with the overhangs. I don't think the part cooling on this is as good as I'd like it to be. Uh, this went to about 20 also on the overhangs. But overall, it's pretty good. So the bottom line on this printer is that there's a lot to like about it. It ticks a lot of boxes. It's Core XY. It's fast. It's got a larger than average build volume of 280 by 280 by 270. It does run Clipper. Um, it has a good web interface. It has a good um, display on the front. It prints really well. Again, it prints really fast. It has a light. There's a couple things that I don't like so much on it. Um, one of the things I said I liked about this is it had Clipper. One of the things I like not so much is the Clipper imp implementation of it. Um, Clipper is open source, but they've done it in such a way on this printer that you can't really change a lot. Um, if you do, it could have a, a very widespread effect on some other things. So you can't update Clipper. You can't really update the modules. You have to wait for Chidi to actually put the updates out for you. Um, this is a very large printer. I really don't like the way it looks. It's kind of ugly. But if you take away the aesthetics of it, it's a really good printer. It's got a steel frame. It's just the plastic panels on the outside are just way overdone. I, I don't know who they're really trying to appeal to on this. But a, a guy like me, it, it definitely doesn't appeal to me. Uh, it's big. It's heavy. The, the spool on the back is a pain in the you-know-what. Um, where I'm going to put this, I've got to make sure I've got room on the side to put a, a, a spool over here because you can't put it in back. I can't be, every time I want to change this, spinning the thing around. It weighs somewhere, I guess, between 40 and 50 pounds. Speaking of filament, I don't have any engineering grade materials here to test, uh, any like abrasives, things like that, except for ABS. The ability to, to heat the chamber on the inside of this 
is a huge plus, um, especially for printing something like if you print a lot of ABS or ASA. Stefan from CNC Kitchen did a video on how the heat of the, in, of the inside of this particular printer helps strengthen the parts. Um, and he does a whole test on it, and it's, it's actually really eye-opening. This is really designed for a lot of those engineering grade or abrasive materials. I really, really like this printer. Um, again, it has a lot of great features on it. There's a couple things I don't like, but those are very small things. It, it's almost like I have to find something wrong with it. Um, but it's, it's a great printer. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it. If you wanna buy one of these, I'll left, I've left a link down below to, to, to purchase one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.